Welcome back to Inside Politics uh, with Siki and coming to you live from the STV studio here in Victoria Land, Lagos, Nigeria. Coming to you on STV and uh, Silverbed News 24, two solid channels through which you watch us. And also, I will also thank our viewers that are watching us through YouTube. Now, um, this segment, I'll be talking to another politician, um, uh, a member of the APC, a chieftain of the APC. Uh, in the person of Mr. Ambrose Ude Hulu. I, I, I tried to get that name right, but I hope I got it right. You're welcome to the studio, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's nice having you live in the studio. Now, um, let us start with this as quickly as possible. You listen to what uh, my guest from the United States, from Tessa, said, and what he said about Nigerian politicians and uh, how selfish they are, uh, and the way they handle issues concerning uh, the people they lead. Do you totally do you agree with him? Um, I don't agree with him. Okay. Though to some, to some extent, he might be saying the truth, but totally, I don't agree. Which area didn't you agree with him? I didn't agree in the area of that the politicians or leaders are trying to frustrate the followers so that they can cajole them to vote for them tomorrow. Okay. No. What is actually happening is because of the, the, the situation that we find ourselves in. If you look at our antecedent, how we've been coming from, from 1999 to 2015, political party PDP was in government, and what happened then was what you see reflected today. And our present party is trying to mend up, and we are trying to make sure that Nigerians are out of the wood. Good. Uh, you mentioned the current party, which of course is expected that for you to say that because you're a member of the APC. Now let's go to the. Uh, I want to focus. My focus today will be on Lagos State, which is where. Uh, you, you have your members, and as a chieftain of um, APC in Lagos State, are you satisfied with the performance of the APC? Because APC have been, okay, depending on how you look at it, uh, from AD to which one, ACN. Yes, yes. Now, AD, ACN, and the APC have been the ruling party in Lagos State for over 20 years now, since 1999. Are you satisfied with the with the performance of your party in Lagos State? I think uh, I can score the 98%. Really? Yeah. Okay, tell me why. The reason I can score the 98% is we all knew how Lagos was before 1999. Okay. It is find it difficult to pass through Oshodi. Okay. I remember we had an experience where a colleague of my wife was in the car and the, her ear was cut off because of the kind of earrings she was using. She had a 18 carat earring on her ears and it was ripped off. Several times there are pickpockets around, but today that is a thing of the past. I remember I used to find cops all around in most areas in Lagos because of the security situation then. But today that is a thing of the past. I remember there used to be refugees around, but today that is a thing of the past. And coming to infrastructure, I think the, uh, the, the party is trying trying his best possible. That's why I say I can't spread 100%. Because we still have some inter road that we need to de develop. No, you've already scored them 98. What, 98. Is, left, what is left? It's 100% already. Uh, so you, uh, for you, they perform excellently well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. Like I said, I bet come to look at it. It is also, some people still believe that with what Lagos State is making uh, from IGR, the highest in the whole country, um, the IGR of Lagos State is the budget of um, about three or four states or five states put together that the achievement since so far does not match uh, what they've been making. And um, that is the challenge for them. What do you have to say about that? Yeah, you see, the Lagos is a, a peculiar state. Looking at the, autogra looking at the topography, then looking at the, the soil uh, condition. So what it takes to construct a road in Lagos may not be the same that, it's, that you used to construct roads in other states. You might look at the current development we have now, you discover that what the Lagos state is making is enough to keep the country, to keep the state running, yeah. at the same time, is justified by what we are seeing okay. today. Okay, so, uh, but let me take a, little, uh, take a little back. The fact still remains that, um, generally, in as much as you can say that Lagos states have, 
but there have been so many promises made to Nigerians by this government um, since 2015 when President Muhammad Buhari came into power. And most of those promises have not been met. Now, um, uh, what's the slogan of that your campaign this time around? Uh, it escaped me, but yes. But the fact is that, do you think that your presidential candidate has what it takes to win the 2023 presidential election? If yes, why do you think so? Well, um, our presidential candidate, Senator Obola Amel Tunubu, mm -hmm. the Jagaban Bogu, think is we are prepared enough to take this country to the promised land. I looked at his antecedents. I see him as a patriotic Nigerian, a true progressive, who, where he was, um, even in the secular, strived to make sure that the military were ousted from power. He fought tooth and nail. He spent his resources to make sure that democracy come to be in Nigeria. So if he's not patriotic, he won't do that. Okay. And I also believe that from his background as an accountant, it has what it takes to turn the economy of this country. And looking at what he's doing presently, he's consulting various groups. He's consulting the engineers, consulting the farmers, consulting with the importers. So he's, he wants to know their problems so he can be able to solve them. But if you, uh, well, you can say that, but mm. to most people, um, part of the problem that they see with your presidential candidate is the issue of uh, imposition of candidates, which many people have blamed him for, especially in Lagos. He single-handedly picks everybody, that, uh, uh, that is an allegation, I'm not the one saying it, allegations that he picks practically everybody, right from the world to the governor, mm. and he determines, I, we all saw what happened. Is that the kind of things that he's going to take to no, the federal? No, 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 you see, if you're not close to a man, you will not understand a man. People, most people have seen Bola Metinubu from afar. The Bola Metinubu I know, one is a capacity builder, and he wants to develop the growth coming up. Okay. And so as a father, you have five children, you must know the character of the five children. You must know those that are weak in an area and strong in other areas. And what he does is advice. He can offer advice. He doesn't choose to pick any candidates. He don't do that. Once he advises and you go around and look at, then if he's satisfied with the party, then it, the, the person becomes the candidate. Okay. He um, doesn't impose anybody. Okay. In, 60, in 30 seconds, um, you, uh, Ashwaji Bola Ben Tunubu was one of those that supported President Muhammad Buhari in 2015 to become the president. Yeah. Now, most people believe that President Buhari has freed Nigerians despite all his promises and the rest of them. How now should Nigerians trust another APC candidate? 30 seconds. Uh, Buhari did not fail Nigeria. Okay. Why? Do he didn't so? fail Nigeria because a depleted tire at a point, we still run distance before it goes down. With a deflated tire? Deflated tire. When well, no. you have a vehicle and you have some tires in it, no. and the tire they have eventually took nail somewhere, somehow, it will still run for about some few kilometers if it can go down. That was what happened to Nigeria. Okay, so Nigeria was a deflated tire. Deflated tire since no. 1999. Okay. Okay. It became deflected in 1999. It came okay. on board 2015, mm -hmm. and it had been managing the vehicle through that way, but now it's completely down. But what he's doing now is trying to see that he can bring it up again. Okay. Look how he just did it recently. He okay. was able to repurchase the Ajakuta Steel Complex, okay. which can salvage Nigeria with, from importing so much things. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, time is not our friend, as I always said on this program. Uh, that is where we're going to anchor it. But you can rest assured that I'm going to invite you um, again before the election in February so that we can throw more light on some of these issues um, concerning your presidential candidate, your party, and why you think Nigerians should vote for your party. That will be all on the program today. If you enjoyed the program, join us again same time next week for another edition of Inside Politics with CK. My name is Chris Kainde-Wan.